Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, December 6th. I'm Mark Dent here with Rob Litterst, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. There's something new and dystopian on the horizon, guys. And for once, it's not about AI. We're talking about dreams. There's one tech startup that believes it has a device that can one day give you the ability to control them. So we're gonna talk about all the business ramifications and you know even like the squishy, weird fantasy and ethical implications of all this. But before we get to that, let's get you up to speed with everything else that's making headlines in the world of business and tech. Let's start off with some more about sleep, actually. Calm, the sleep and meditation app, released a new bedtime story for premium users told by actor Jimmy Stewart. Kind of, at least. The It's a Wonderful Life star died in 1997, and the voice, uh, you know, is generated by what else? AI. This is super wild to me, Mark. We were just talking about this Mm -hmm. yesterday, but... Kiss is apparently done touring and they're going to have like a digital avatar (laughs) continue touring that they can drive money from. It's really, really interesting how AI is kind of starting to manifest in the entertainment world. This is, I think, honestly genius. Jimmy Stort has a really soothing voice. I watch It's a Wonderful Life every single year. I've had this idea for Calm for years to have an entire sleepscape dedicated to the Masters, the golf tournament and the sounds of Augusta. I honestly oh, think yeah, that would just smart. be like absolutely brilliant. But I can live with Jimmy Stewart. I think that will help. I don't use sleepscapes, but I think I could definitely fall asleep to the soft purr of Jimmy Stewart's old voice. So here's my like maybe lukewarm take. Maybe it's a hot take. I don't know. Uh-huh. But I actually, I love Jimmy Stewart's voice, but I don't find it soothing <laughs> at all. I find it brilliant and amazing, but I'd rather hear like... Um, Vern Lundquist or Jim Nance, Nance almost, I guess. but <laughs> Or just the birds, yeah. the birds chirping. Yeah, that would work yeah. just fine for me. Let's move on now to some pharmacy news. CVS is rolling out Cost Vantage, which is a new prescription medication reimbursement model. The company says it'll bring more transparency to its drug pricing system by using a simpler formula to calculate costs. Meanwhile, Rite Aid is struggling. It's going to offload another 79 store leases pending court approval across several states. Since filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in October, Rite Aid has put up 180 leases and may liquidate up to 500 of its 2,000 plus locations. In Vegas, the sphere is working wonders. So far, the venue has brought in $75 million in revenue since its opening on September 29th. There's only been two acts thus far, though. U2 and a Darren Aronofsky nature film. And the Sphere does have a long way to get back its investment. The space cost about $2.3 billion. In pizza news, Domino's is back at it. The pizza chain will dole out $500,000 in snow plowing grants this winter, ostensibly to make it easier for pizza delivery. But, you know, this is also just kind of about marketing and seeming like they're doing some good things for cities and for the country. Yeah, this is some next level marketing right here and absolutely genius. There's nothing more frustrating if you live in a place with snow than having the roads just completely blocked and not being able to go anywhere. And I think Domino's pushing the envelope here and offering to help out is just genius optics on their part. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a ton of money. I did a story last year about the economics of snow. Municipalities and states, they're so cash-strapped when it comes to this stuff. Oh, it's a mess. Even states in the north, they can't find enough plow drivers, et cetera. So it's a small dent, but it's still something. A hundred percent. If you see the article, there's logos on the front of this plow that says plowing for pizza. Cold road shouldn't happen to hot pizza. And it's got Domino's logos all over it, which is just absolutely genius. All right. So last one before we get to the main story. Wikipedia has released its 25 most read articles of 2023. 
The list includes J. Robert Oppenheimer, no surprise there. Deaths in 2023, I guess also no surprise there. The 2023 World Cup, India, and The Last of Us. But topping the list was ChatGPT, which got 49.5 million page views. That is a lot of views. Okay, let's get on to the main story. There was a author in the early 20th century named Mary Arnold Forster, who was known as someone who extensively studied dreams and sleep. And she said that we have this, quote, primary self that lets us make decisions and apply logic during the day. But the primary self is usually latent when we're asleep, except for instances of what Mary Arnold Forster coined to be lucid dreaming. You guys have maybe heard that term before. It's when you can kind of control stuff even when you're asleep. And it's an incredible experience, but a very rare one that some people probably never even get to experience until perhaps now because capitalism and Silicon Valley are getting involved. Right, Rob? You're 100% right, Mark. And I mean, I think it was only a matter of time before Silicon Valley came for our subconscious. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised it took this long. <laughs> Freud is either like spinning in his grave or he's just kind of happy in his grave. <laughs> exactly. Before we get into this, have you ever had a lucid dream? Totally. I mean, it's been a minute to be sure, but particularly when I was like in college, yeah. you know, I took psychology courses, obviously. So I thought a lot more about my dreams and absolutely I've had some. I've never had one and I would love to have one. I'd love to just have the experience. But I remember reading something about Steve Nash, the mm -hmm. former NBA player, and he was talking about how he was having a lot of lucid dreams. And I think the way that he did it, he was keeping a sleep journal basically by his bedside and would mm -hmm. basically track like every single thing that he was dreaming about, like every single time he woke up during the night. And apparently from what he said, it sounded like that could potentially help. So for all the listeners out there that are trying to have a lucid dream, there's the old fashioned way. So to your point, Mark, this company is called Prophetic. Mm -hmm. They've already raised over a million dollars to develop a headpiece called the Halo, which the company says could one day allow users to control their own dreams. As you mentioned, a lucid dream is a state between wake and sleep where an individual is aware that they are dreaming. The idea here is that if tech could help individuals harness their lucid dreams, they would, in theory, be able to induce them on demand and use that time productively, for example, to finish work projects, Come which on. is just crazy. This sounds like so cool, right? Right. Being able to lose a dream, but to think that it might be used for work is a lot less cool. I will say this, though. You were talking about Steve Nash earlier. I was reading up a little bit more about lucid dreaming, and there's thought that athletes do benefit from it because it's actually quite conducive for athletes to be able to kind of visualize and do things like that, you know, which is obviously a lot better than like, I don't want to be doing spreadsheets in my dreams. Yeah. And I don't want anyone else to be doing that either, you know? <laughs> Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, these guys were all like visualization masters. They were all kind of Zen masters. I think that's one of the things that Phil Jackson taught Michael Jordan about with meditation and visualization and to your point, I think if you're an athlete, that can be super, super helpful. And it's not as dorky as controlling your dreams and going between different tabs in Excel. It's a very different experience. Yeah. What this company has talked about, they've mentioned engineers, you know? Right. Not athletes, engineers. Yeah. Okay. So the Halo is the name of this device. It's essentially a headband that's worn like a crown and contracts sound waves, which are released in the region of the brain responsible <laughs> for lucid dreams. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but this is just really, really wild. Yeah. And then the beams that are part of this headpiece will then activate parts of the brain that control our awareness and decision making. So the idea is that this halo can essentially help you tap into the part of your brain that becomes aware and more easily access that part as you're dreaming the company's basing the product's technology on ongoing research done by the Donders Institute in the Netherlands, which has been studying lucid dreaming for a long time now. And there's also a familiar name, or at least brain, behind the operation, Afshin Mahin, who designed the N1 brain implant for Elon Musk's Neuralink, mm. who's essentially the main designer on the Halo. How much are these going to set you back? So the Halos are going to cost around $1,500 to $2,000 each Honestly, kind of reminds me of the VR headset from Apple. Yeah. Just a very expensive piece of technology here. It's a, immediately what I was thinking is I'm just like, okay, wear it around your head, costs a lot of money, is of questionable usefulness. Exactly. <laughs> sounds like VR. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it certainly sounds like this is original, but have there been other attempts in the past to do the same thing, to try to make this lucid dream besides pen and paper and Steve Nash's great advice? <laughs> totally. So I look at this and I actually do think this is probably the most serious effort to date 
And the one that really has the most weight behind it, I mean, especially having the fellow who's designing the brain implant for Neuralink working on it. I mean, I think that's pretty promising because he's very clearly been pretty deep into this subject area and and clearly has a lot of technological expertise. But if you're dealing with anything that has to do with self-improvement, you're dealing with a lot of kind of shams and snake oil and stuff like that. I mean, to be honest, like there are a handful of products, there's headbands, eye masks, supplements, all sorts of stuff that promises you the ability to control your own dream. If any of it works, I don't know. I haven't actually heard anybody tell me that they have successfully, consistently lucid dreamed because of any of these products, but I'm sure they've worked for some people. Yeah. And I'll say this, the lucid dreaming part of this again is just very fascinating. I just don't truly understand why this company is bringing up engineers and the ability to code while you're asleep or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the people who are actually researching this, and again, not for prophetic, but just in general, there's a story I found in The Guardian where this one researcher was talking about how she often has like tidal waves in her dreams. And so she's able to transform herself into a dolphin wow. and like swim through them. And it's what? like, that sounds like money well spent. I don't know if I'd pay for this device or as much as it costs, but to have the ability to be able to do something that I cannot do in my normal life while I'm asleep sounds like a really good thing that I frankly would pay for and that I would want companies to build for me if they can. Neuroscientists estimate that 70% of people experience lucid dreaming at least once in their lifetime. And the other thing about this is if there are cool use cases like the one that you just described, and let's say some other things besides you know getting trapped in Excel, I already have gone through periods in my career where I've been dreaming in Excel or dreaming in you know, Google Slides. <laughs> I don't necessarily know that any of us need more of that. Yeah. But anytime you can sell something and say, you spend one third of your life in this state, anytime you can leverage that, people are going to buy it. People are going to be looking for that and think that it could potentially change their life. And so I don't think that demand is going to be a problem. Yeah, no, certainly an untapped market. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We have a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, please get signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we will see you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day, JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win a lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.